And welcome back to another episode of OMG, The World is Ending, thanks to AI. I'm your host, Taylor Jackson, and this episode is brought to you by The Bloomin' Onion. It's not. I just wanted to show you Bloomin' Onion. Ah. Today, we're talking about a thing that is going to be a problem for us and some ways that you can actually combat it, that it can actually maybe become a positive for you, or at least ways to mitigate the negative aspects of it, because it unfortunately will be a really challenging uh, wedding photography life from now moving forward. So, some of you might know Ben Scheich. This isn't a dad cam, this is a real cam. He's not the problem. He did post some images that were generated by AI, made it very clear that they were generated by AI in his style, and they're pretty darn convincing. So you can see the issue here is that a photographer just starting up, no portfolio, come into the industry, just generate all of your images by text, be like, yeah, this is my portfolio. And with the intention of like, hey, I could create something in this style, but knowing that they haven't been to all of the fake locations in the world that are generated by AI. Is there a way to trace this back? Maybe. Is a couple going to go through that process on a wedding photographer's website or on their Instagram? It's pretty unlikely. A wedding photography portfolio is this weird disjointed mess of different images typically that don't really go together. So it's very easy for a photographer to hide some AI generated work within maybe some real work. So there's an, an image of a local area and then an image of just a beautiful mountain scene that doesn't exist in real life with a couple and a dress that doesn't exist, but it looks pretty. And the couple's like, that's nice. This photographer's vision aligns with my style. We like them. What this means for the honest photographers that are creating all of their own work and uploading real images that they've taken to the internet is that you're going to be at a significant disadvantage when it comes to the overall loveliness and also volume of work that you're able to generate. So how do you combat this? Number one, you gotta get to Outback Steakhouse and get a blooming onion. Number two, you don't actually have to do that there. Number two, there's a number of ways you can combat this, or at least the ways that you can kind of place yourself on the good side of this. Couples will be going into this, uh, maybe not right now, but maybe over the next six, eight, 12 months, knowing that this is a potential that they could be looking at AI generated images of real wedding day couples in the local area. I could generate somebody downtown Toronto. The internet knows what downtown Toronto looks like. I can put a couple downtown Toronto. I can put a couple in a blimp down Toronto. Look at that. Isn't that, that a nice picture? I did that one. That was my own Photoshop. So what I recommend to you is that you make it clear that you're actually the one taking the pictures. There's a few ways to do this. One is obviously text. Two is the Bloomin' Onion. Three is, I think it's important, and I've stressed this over and over and over and over again, to really spend a lot of time, I'm gonna do a slow zoom here, spend more time creating that behind the scenes content that I've told you to create for the past 10 years of, of doing this thing on YouTube here. And what that means is when you put it in that promotional video or you put it in a reel with the reel behind the scenes and then the image, or maybe the image comes first, then it goes into the behind the scenes, it's proof that you actually created all of these images. Is this going to become a real problem in our industry? I genuinely believe so. It's, I would suspect probably already a problem, but we're just not aware of it. How do you prove that this person didn't go and take that photo? Where it will reflect negatively is when a photographer that has used AI generated images in their portfolio goes out to create real work and they're not able to match the quality of their portfolio, this will result in negative reviews. However, weirdly I've noticed that a lot of couples don't really look at reviews or if they do, they don't really dig too deep into it. So another thing you can do you can talk about this in first meetings. It can be a way to differentiate yourself and also make couples aware of it because I feel like a lot of couples probably aren't aware of that this could be a possible thing yet. So in the first meeting, find an organic way to bring that up. What does that look like? A couple asks you, what is your style? And you're like, you contacted me, you looked at my style, why are you asking me? And you can be like, I'm just so light and airy. And also all of my images are from real couples, whereas other people in town are potentially using AI generated images. So verify that they actually took the images that they're showing you if you're having any of their meetings. Okay, maybe do it less aggressive than that. But I do think it's something to make your couples aware of. Now, where it's going to get even more gray is with Adobe's new Firefly, where you can kind of start with the image that, that you have and you can add details to it. So we've had the Adobe neural filters for a little while now, uh, which means you can take a summer scene and you make it winter. That's great and all, but now you're going to be able to actively select different pieces of your scene and really change them. So now all of a sudden you photograph a real life couple you can change the entire environment that that couple is going to be in. You can generate more images based on that object. So if you want to make a full blog post of that couple, you can technically do that with text and generating scenes behind the real life couple. So is this the end of wedding photography? No, I don't think so. I do believe that wedding photography is one of the most protected spaces from AI, simply because couples are hiring you to go out and to do the actual work and to photograph their actual wedding day. Generating AI images of a wedding doesn't really do anything for the couple. They're not real memories. So I'm not worried about the future of wedding photography per se. I am worried that it's going to very quickly merge with video and you're going to have to do both, but that's a topic for another time. Or if you're interested, you can buy my course, Hybrid Wedding Photography, how to do both photography and video at the same time. 
as one human being or maybe yourself in a second. I do believe that that is going to be the future of the industry. So if you're interested in seeing my process, you can get that course and you can see start to finish. We do an edit. We go to a real destination wedding, all kinds of stuff. But I think that that is protected. I think that we're going to be able to do that for a long, long time. What becomes a lot more gray is the booking process and how you differentiate yourself from other photographers in your town. Check out Book More Weddings 2020. I'll stop promoting things. But it really is important that you start creating that behind the scenes footage to prove that you've actually created these images. At first, behind the scenes stuff was just to get people connected to you as a brand and hopefully experience your personality, take some of the mystery away from the day. Just knocked over my 45 millimeter tilt shift Nikon lens. Shout out to this lens. It's back again and it works less than ever, though it's not as beat up as Igor's lens. Video coming soon from this shoot. Subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed. If you like wedding photography things, we go to real life shoots. We do things here. So behind the scenes footage, it was to simply show people the behind the scenes to get the, the, the mystery unveiled and they can now picture themselves having you take their pictures, that's great. Whereas now there's going to be another level where you are actually going to have to kind of prove that you've taken these images. Or if you do prove that you've taken the images, you all of a sudden have a lot more uh, trust indicators pointing at you that you're not afraid to show the behind the scenes. And yes, you actually, you actually took the pictures on your website. So that's my story for today. If you're a wedding photographer, you're fine. But maybe looking into doing photo video if you want to kind of future proof yourself and diversify your business. Now when local shops contact you for some commercial photos, you can be like, yeah, I do photo and I'll also do a video for you. Well, product photography might uh, have a hard time. But I think by diversifying your skill set, you're going to put yourself in the best place to see kind of where the industry moves in the future here. That's all for me today. <laughs> My book, More Weddings 2023. Sign up to the members website. You get all of it. 100% money back guarantee. You sign up. You don't like it. Let me know. My email is right here. And I'll send your money back, but I guarantee there's hundreds of hours of content that's going to make your wedding photography business a heck of a lot better. And to close this off, shout out to the Bloomin' Onion and this 45 millimeter tilt shift Nikon lens, which is one of my favorite tilt shift lenses. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time.